So in this video, we're going to be talking about mesh. And mesh is what all of the fabric pieces and garments are made of. If you go into your view menu at the top and toggle towards the mesh view, you'll see that all your garments are made of, of these particles that create this kind of grid shape. This is the mesh. And in this video, we're going to learn how to control it, manipulate it, and create different kind of uh, construction details using the different mesh manipulation tools. So in our first file, we have this messed up pant leg. Um, you could potentially just turn simulation on and kind of pull at it until you fix it, but it's not really that useful or helpful. So we're gonna use a different tool it's called the select mesh tool and it lets you grab specific sections of the mesh. So instead of grabbing the entire pattern piece, you can select either into the 2D or 3D window, each section of the mesh that you want to move and it will only move that section. So with simulation on, you can select that part of the pant leg and just pull it out. You may have to do this a couple times to fix it, but it's much easier than just trying to pull it with the um, regular hand. So the second tool we're gonna use is pins. Let's click on the pin box tool, which is in your 3D toolbar. This turns your view into a mesh view overview view. You can select any sections of your garment using the pin box tool and it'll highlight that area in these red pins. If you wanna delete them, you can right click on them and hit delete. You can also attach them to your avatar. So pins, um, like in real life, can be used to drape garments, attach garments to your avatar, um, put garments in specific positions. If I pin any section of my garment, and then I turn on simulation, that section is basically frozen, so you can move just that section. The rest of the garment is still draping, but you have a section that doesn't do anything. When you delete those pins, the garment will just go back to being draped the way it is. The pin box will also let you select single pins. If you zoom in, you can click anywhere in the mesh and that particle or that section of the mesh will be pinned. You can double click on an outline and it will pin that entire outline. So it helps you control how garments lay and you can kind of drape them more specifically than just pulling your garment around with the select move tool. You can also create single pins just by holding down the W and then using your select move tool and clicking anywhere in your garment. So if I want to uh, button this collar, I want the buttons to kind of align themselves first, but I don't want to ruin the collar by just moving the mesh using my um, grabby hand. So I'm gonna create a pin at the top using the pin box tool. And then with simulation on, I pull the collar over. I can also create a single pin by just holding down W and clicking anywhere on the garment. So on the bottom half, I've created a single pin. And once they're aligned, I can use my fasten button tool to fasten the buttons. I'm clicking the button and then the matching buttonhole. I can also select multiple buttons by drawing a marquee box around them and then matching them up to the buttonholes. So once I turn simulation on, everything is aligned properly, and then I can right click on my pins with my select move tool and hit delete pins. So now that we've learned those two tools, let's use them to create a uh, construction detail. So let's just tie a knot. In our third file, we have this shirt dress with a tie front. I'm going to use the pin box tool to pin the back section of the tie and the two sides. This will let me keep the tie floating, but then also be able to loop the two sides to the front. 
So I want simulation on. I'm just using my select move tool to move the pins to the front. And I kind of have to check my views. So I'm turning as I go. Sometimes you may collide with the arms or the different parts of the garment. So once I get it to the front, I just kind of position it where I want it. And I can move the back piece too closer because it's going to stay stuck there and it may jump forward too much once I delete the pin. So I kind of want everything to be a bit close. So once I'm in position, I'm going to right click on those sets of pin and delete selected pins. You still want the first uh, two pins on the, on the front. Otherwise your tie is going to kind of fall. So now that I'm ready to tie, I'm going to just make sure that I want to stabilize everything so that my ties aren't going to like pull forward through the garment. And I'm going to cross my two sections. You can do this slowly. And if you notice, so what you want to do is push one end over and through that little triangle near the waist, but you don't actually have enough clearance. So I'm going to use a pin to pull that other little section. So you see how I'm having like some difficulty pushing my end through there. So I hit W on my keyboard and click there. I'll be able to open a pin and then move it so that I have space to tie my knot. So right now, I'm a little worried that my two fabric pieces are going to like bleed through. So I'm going to click on my pattern and in the property editor, adjust the additional collision thickness, which creates a buffer between my two patterns. I'm going to increase this to like five or 10. It's up to you. But now my patterns are less likely to collide and kind of rip apart. And I can pull my, uh, my tie with more force. So I'm just going to adjust it, pull it to the point where I want. This may take some practice just to kind of get the hang of where to actually move the two pieces, but hopefully this will be a good example. So I'm just going to pull one end and keep the other end stationary. And then once I get to a point where it's like tight enough, I can uh, start to stabilize that knot. And you can adjust as you go and also change the additional collision thickness as you go. I'm going to delete the back pins first just so I know how tight I'm actually pulling on this garment. And now you're ready to tack everything. So the, there's another tool we're going to learn, which is the tack tool. The tack tool just lets you sew single points of garments together. So you basically click on the points you want to tack together. So those points will connect. We're gonna use the tack tool to um, make sure that our knot doesn't come out undone. You can just tack anywhere in there, any place that you think may be touching, just start clicking and tacking those sections together. It'll really help your knot from coming apart because if you don't tack it, it'll probably slip apart. And then once you're done, you can simulate, you can lower the additional collision thickness back down. Um, it's normally at 2.5 and I would go slow because if you do it too low, your knot might fly apart. Then I'm gonna right click on my pins and to delete them. And I would suggest deleting them one at a time just to help your garment fall correctly. And again, I'm going to adjust my additional collision thickness once I'm more sure that my simulation is stable and that my knot's doing what I want it to. And then there's your knot. You can play with this a bit. Um, you can adjust it. If you want, you can uh, pin the top and then adjust the bottoms, but you're basically done.